Today we continue our memory series with a man who has starred in all areas of the entertainment business, from burlesque to Broadway to movies. But many of us remember him best for his long-running children's television show. Watch. Thank you. It's me. Uh, my name is Mickey Lee. With a checkered hat and checkered coat. With a body giggle in my throat. My chili dance like a billy goat. Put them all together. Put them all together. And it's you. I just heard a funny story. Great. Well, can I, I gotta, sit down? I, can I tell you the story? Yeah. I gotta tell it to you. Um, uh, I'll sit down. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, pardon me. If if I if I spray, you'll have to push back a little. I lisp, you know. And I see everybody in my family lisp. All my cousins lisp, except my father. He stutters. In fact, if he didn't stutter, I'd have been two years older. <laughs> But anyway, I heard a funny story. Yeah. I heard a funny story. Uh, three high school students were walking by the White House, you see. All of a sudden, they heard, help, help, help. And they jumped over the fence, and they ran, and they ran right to the swimming pool. And who was in there drowning but President Reagan, see? President Reagan. And they, they jumped in, and, and at this one fellow, he grabbed President Reagan, and he got him up. And, and he saved his life, you know, gave him resuscitation. Uh, <laughs> oh, shut up. Anyway, uh, he, gave, they, he resuscitated him, and President Reagan says, Well, you saved my life. Just say whatever you want and you'll get it. One of the boys says, I want to go to Harvard. He says, You're in. The other boy said, I want to go to Yale. He says, You got it. And the other guy, the other the young fellow, he says, I want to be buried in Arlington Cemetery. And he says, you want to be buried in Arlington Cemetery? Why? He says, well, when I go home and tell my father I saved Ronald Reagan, he's going to kill me. <laughs> Thank you for that. We have a lot of Democrats here today. Oh, yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. Anyway. I must ask you. What? Uh, maybe my memory is playing tricks. Did you open every one of your shows with that routine? Yeah, with you, who with it's me. With the song? We had a little different openings. They built a little automobile for me, and I used to come through, and... Uh, uh, I used to break a balloon and all kinds of things, but I used to... You Who It's Me was my oh, theme song. An exhausting opening number. Uh, yeah. To say the least. Now, you've worked in burlesque. You've done movies. I mean, you were in a... You were a comedian. Well, uh, For years. How'd you wind up with a, with a child's show? Well, I'll tell you what happened. I was doing a show for Procter & Gamble, mm -hmm. co-starring with Vivian Blaine in New York City. It was called Those Two. And Procter & Gamble is known to only have adult shows. You know, they have these soap operas and everything dramatic. And they don't, they don't have kid shows. And this wasn't supposed to be a kid show. Well, they, I just come back from playing in, in London at the Palladium, and they signed me up to co-star with Vivian Blaine. And uh, when I came back to New York, um, uh, I had gotten a telephone call from a man by the name of Larry White, who produced the first Ethel Merman, Mary Martin show for Ford Motors. And it so happens that Gabby Hayes, who was doing a show at NBC, his show was dropped, and they needed a kid show to fill in that spot. So uh, Larry White's son said, Daddy, you said you needed a show that, that NBC called you, and they said they need a kid show. I know just the perfect fella for it. Pinky Lee, he says, who's Pinky Lee? I never heard of him before. He says, Pinky Lee is doing a show with Vivian Blaine, and he's very funny. So, uh, Mr. White tried all over to get my telephone number, and he went to a certain big agency. They were mad at me because I, I left Palladium in London, and they wouldn't give him my number. But he found it, and he called me long distance. He says, Pinky, will you come to New York and audition for me for a show? I said, yeah, you'll pay all our expenses and everything. He said, sure. So my wife and I, we got on a plane, went to the Pierre Hotel in, London, in New York, and 
Uh, he got a couple of acts together and, and a producer and a dance direct choreographer put this thing on and we did the show for NBC and right after the show he, he came to me and says, Pinky, they want the show. Aren't you teaching? I've been approached by several universities. In fact, they've got a Pinky Lee course at the Southern Methodist University in, in, in Dallas. Dallas, Texas. Five and a half credits if you take a Pinky Lee course. The, <laughs> the, the man, No, no, no kidding, man. No, I know you're not kidding. Uh, 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 Dr. Rodney Davis interviewed me for five full days. And, and so uh, I've been getting uh, a, lot of, a lot of offers from various universities. Oh and I'm going to start teaching at UCLA in April. Well, congratulations. And thank you, Pinky. Keep your fingers crossed. I don't know the first thing about thank teaching. Thank you for being a part of our series. This is wonderful. Pinky thank Lee, you. Thank you. I'm Dr. Rosenfeld, and right after this, I'll tell you why you may have to get an additional flu shot this year. <laughs>